Today we're sewing a dolman style dress with elastic in the back waistband and an invisible zipper. This is the Veronica dress by Seamwork. This is one of the many patterns that you have access to as a Seamwork member, but you do not need to be a member to access the pattern. I've left a link to the pattern below so you can check out all the details. Grab your materials and let's get started. Apply interfacing to your front facing, your back facings, and one of your front waistband pieces. Place your back bodice pieces right sides together with your front bodice, matching the shoulder seams and pin in place. Sew the shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then finish each raw edge separately and press the seams open. Once the shoulder seams are sewn, place your front and back pieces right sides together once again. And matching your notches, pin your side seam. Doing this on both sides. Sew both side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then once again, finish both sides of the seam separately and press the seams open. Now I'll open out my front and back bodice pieces away from each other. And we're going to sew basting stitches along the bottom of the front bodice piece only from side seam to side seam. I'm going to use the longest stitch on my machine with about a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving thread tails on both sides so that I have threads to pull for gathering. Here is my front skirt piece. I've gone ahead and finished the raw edges along the sides on both sides separately. And here are both of my back skirt pieces which I've also gone ahead and finished those side edges for separately. Now I'm going to place the back pieces on the front piece right sides together, matching the single notches on the side seam and pin in place. Doing this at both side seams with both back pieces. Now we can sew both of our side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. Here are my front and back skirt pieces opened out at the side seams. We're going to take the top of the front skirt piece back to the sewing machine and sew basting stitches for the front skirt piece only just as we did for the bottom of the front bodice. Once again, using the longest stitch on your machine, I'm going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance all the way from seam to seam, leaving thread tails on both sides so I can pull the stitches for gathering. The instructions call for one and a half inch wide elastic. We're going to cut a length of elastic that's half of our waist measurement. My waist measurement is 25, so I'm going to cut a strip of elastic that's 12 and a half inches long. Then we're going to take this elastic piece and cut it in half. Now take one of your back waistband pieces and place one of the elastic pieces on the wrong side of the fabric. Center it in place and pin along that outer edge. And repeat for one of your other back waistband pieces. Now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and baste the elastic to these corresponding back waistband pieces with a half inch seam allowance. Then we're going to attach safety pins to both of the loose ends of the elastic to help us at a later step. Now take your outer uninterfaced front waistband piece and place your back pieces right sides together with those back waistband pieces. Match your notches and pin in place. Doing this on both sides. Now sew these side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. Now I'm going to take my interfaced front waistband piece and place my remaining back waistband pieces right sides together with this front waistband piece, matching the notches and pinning in place on both sides. Sew the side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open just as we did for the previous waistband pieces. Here are the bottom edges of my front and back bodice pieces. Now we're going to take the outer waistband, the waistband with the elastic pieces attached, and place it right sides together with the bottom of the bodice. Align the side seams and pin in place. Also aligning the back edges and pin in place. 
Continue pinning between the back edge and the side seam on both sides. And for the bottom edge of the front of the dress, we're going to pull those basting stitches so that the front of the dress and the front waistband fit together perfectly. Once those pieces fit together and the gathers are distributed evenly, match your notches and pin in place. Then we're going to sew this waistband to the bodice along the bottom from outer edge all the way across to the opposite outer edge using basting stitches with about a half inch seam allowance. Now that the outer waistband is attached, we're going to turn this bodice over to the wrong side and place the right side of the inner waistband on the wrong side of the bodice edge. Pin in place all the way across, matching your seams and your notches. Now we'll sew these waistbands together from one end to the other with the bodice sandwiched in between with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to trim that seam all the way across by about half. And then open out those waistband pieces giving this seam a good press. I've gone ahead and folded that raw bottom edge of the inner waistband to the wrong side by 5 8 of an inch all the way across. Now we're going to attach this outer waistband to the top of the skirt. Place the raw edge of your outer waistband on the top of the skirt right sides together, matching your side seams and pin in place. And then pin the back waistband and the back skirt together doing that on both sides. And then pull the basting stitches that we sewed into the front skirt so that the front skirt fits the waistband perfectly and pin in place. Then we can sew the outer waistband to the top of the skirt all the way across with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to trim this new seam then I'm going to open out that seam and press this outer waistband seam allowance up and away from the skirt. Then I'm going to take that folded edge of the inner waistband and place it over that top stitching line of the skirt so that that folded edge just covers those stitches and pin in place all the way across. Then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and from the outside of the garment I'm going to stitch in the ditch of that bottom waistband seam, also stitching along that inner fold of the inner waistband as I go, doing this all the way across. Now that I've secured that waistband along the bottom, finishing that bottom edge on the inside, the instructions also have you top stitching along the top of the waistband. I'm going to be skipping that upper top stitching because it's a little bit too tight of a space for me to top stitch along the top without catching the elastic on either side of the back waistband. Now using that safety pin that we attached to our elastic that's now on the inside of the waistband, we're going to pull that elastic until it meets the raw edge of the waistband. Remove that safety pin and pin that elastic in place through all layers. Doing this for both back dress pieces. And then baste that elastic in place through the waistband with a 5 8 inch seam allowance on both sides. Before we install the invisible zipper, I'm going to finish the raw edges of the back bodice and the back skirt from top to bottom separately on both sides. The pattern calls for a 22 inch long invisible zipper. I'm going to open up my zipper and take it to my ironing board and use my fingers to open up those coils so I can flatten it out from top to bottom, doing this on both sides of the zipper tape. And now with right sides together, I'm going to place the right side of my zipper tape 
along my right center back. And I want my top zipper stop to be 5 eighths of an inch below the upper edge of the dress. I also want the teeth of my zipper tape to be 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge and pin in place. Now using a zipper foot or an invisible zipper foot, sew close to those zipper teeth from top to the bottom of the zipper as far as your presser foot will allow you to get to the bottom. Now that that right zipper tape is attached, I'm going to close the zipper and I'm going to place the left zipper tape right sides together with the left side of the dress. Now while the zipper is closed, I want to align the waistbands and the tops of the dress. Once I have those two key points aligned, I'm going to make sure that the left zipper teeth are once again 5 eighths of an inch away from the left edge and pin in place. And also just as we did on the right side, we want to make sure that the top zipper stop is 5 eighths of an inch away from the top edge. And then continue pinning the left zipper tape. Now I can open up that zipper tape. Once again, using my zipper foot or an invisible zipper foot, so close to the zipper teeth on the left side from top to as far as you can get to the bottom. And now I'll close that zipper once again. And I'm going to pin together the rest of the center back from the bottom of the zipper to the bottom of the dress. Now to sew the rest of the seam, I'm going to start with my zipper foot sewing the first two or three inches so I can get my needle as close to the point where I stopped my zipper stitching as possible. After I've sewn those two or three inches, I'll switch back to my regular foot and continue sewing to the bottom of the dress, all with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then press that seam open. Place your front and back facings right sides together, matching the shoulder seams and pin in place. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. Once those pieces are attached, you're going to finish the entire outer edge of the facing in your preferred method. I'm going to use my serger. Open up that back zipper just a bit and open out that zipper flat. Take the corresponding short edge of your facing and line up the top and side edges of the facing with the top and side edges of the bodice and pin along that zipper tape. Do this on both sides. Now using your zipper foot, you're going to sew close to those zipper teeth once again, this time through the facing, from the top to the bottom of the facing, doing this on both sides. Now take those seam allowances of the seam that we just sewed and fold the seam allowance along your stitching line toward the facing and pin in place on both sides. And then continue pinning the top of the facing all around the neckline. And then sew the facing to the neckline from the outer edge to the opposite outer edge with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're going to trim those corners at the top of the zipper and then continue trimming that seam allowance all the way around. And also clip into the curves of the neckline to the stitching line but not beyond. Now we're going to press that facing up and away from the dress and then we're going to understitch. We're going to sew this seam allowance to the facing from one edge all the way to the other, stitching close to that original seam line. Once you approach the corners where the zipper are, it will be difficult for your presser foot to sew all the way to the corner, so just understitch as far as you can and backstitch to secure.
Now that that's understitched, turn the facing to the right side of the dress, poking out those corners, and give that neckline seam a really good press. At each of the shoulder seams of the facing and the outer garment, place a pin through the groove of that facing seam so that it comes out of the groove of the shoulder seam on the outside of the garment. Do that for both shoulder seams. Then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch in the ditch of the shoulder seams on both sides from the top to the bottom of the facing, back stitching to secure. To finish the armhole edges, the pattern calls for half-inch single-fold bias tape. I'm going to unfold the pre-folded creases of my bias tape and fold back the short edge by half of an inch. Now I'm going to place this folded back edge right sides together with my armhole at the side seam, aligning the raw edges and pin in place. Continue pinning the bias tape to the armhole all the way around. Now that the bias tape is back at the underarm seam, I'm going to allow the loose edge to overlap the folded edge by about half of an inch and trim off the excess. And then pin that loose edge in place. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew the binding all around the armhole with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now working from the inside of the garment, I'm gonna turn my bias tape outward so that it's turned out and away from the armhole. I'm going to fold the bias tape along its outer crease and then fold that folded edge along the seam line that we just sewed. So now the edges of the armhole are fully encased, folded along the seam line with a clean fold on the inside as well. Pin in place like this all the way around. Now I'll take it to my sewing machine and sew close to the inner edge of that bias tape all the way around. And repeat on the other side to finish both armholes in the same way. The hem allowance for the bottom of the dress is one and a quarter inches. The pattern instructions say to fold the raw edge to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch, and then fold it once again to the wrong side by an inch, so that you can edge stitch close to that inner fold all the way around. I've just gone ahead and surged all the way around the bottom of the dress, and I folded up that hem allowance to the wrong side by an inch and a quarter, and I'm going to pin in place like this all the way around. Now I'll take it to my sewing machine and sew close to my serging stitches all the way around. And once that hem is finished, you're all done with your dress. Thank you for watching this sew along. Check out the rest of my video library for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.